Let's create a well in Blender. First, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ins, search for the Extra Objects add-in and enable it. Press Shift-A, go to Mesh, Extras, Wall Factory. Before moving or adjusting it, open the properties, set the top value to 3, set the depth value to 1, set the thickness value to 0.05 and disable openings. In front view, switch to edit mode and select all of your mesh. Then press Alt-S to scale all of your bricks until they slightly overlap. In the modifier tab, give your object a bevel modifier with 3 to 5 segments. Then give your object a simple deform modifier, set the type to bend and the axis to Z, set the angle to between 365 and 375 degrees, depending on when each end of the wall meets. Then right-click and shade smooth and apply both modifiers. Add a cube and place it on top of the bricks. In top view, align it with the center of the well and scale it down to an appropriate size of a wooden beam. Make sure the height is also to a proportionate level. Add a loop cut to your cube and move it near the top. Select the faces on either end, then press E, S and Y or X depending on the orientation of your model and extrude the faces outwards. Add a loop cut to both of the extended sides and have both selected. Then press S, Y to scale them out equally. Select the faces on either end and extrude upwards slightly. Then go to Edge and select Bridge Edge Loops. In the Properties, set the number of cuts to 1. In X-ray mode, select all of the center edges and move them down to an appropriate level. When done, duplicate the frame and move it along the axis to the other side of the well. You can create a more detailed and complex frame if you want, but for the purpose of this video, I'll be keeping it simple. Let's now move on to forming the roof tiles. Add a circle and in front view, rotate it by 90 degrees. In edit mode, select one half of the circle and delete. Select the right vertex and extrude it out on the X-axis. When done, press Ctrl A and apply the rotation and scale. In top view, extrude the vertices out on the Y axis, scale them down slightly, then select the two right vertices and press SX0 to level them out. Reselect the extrude vertices and in side view, move them down so they align with the front. Give your object a solidify modifier, take even thickness and set the value to 0.08. Add an Array modifier and adjust the X value until both tiles are touching. Add another Array modifier, zero out all the values, then adjust the Y until the tiles are touching. Also, slightly increase the Z value to create some space between them. Set the top Array value to 9 and set the bottom one to 6. When done, align the tiles with your frame and adjust the size of them if necessary. Add a cylinder in between your two frames and ensure it reaches from one end to the other. Go to Object and set the origin to Geometry. Duplicate the cylinder, scale it down on the x-axis, and then scale up the model as a whole. In Edit Mode, give it a number of loop cuts, then duplicate them. Press P and separate by selection. Right-click and convert these loop cuts into a curve and apply the scale. In the Curve Properties, under the Geometry tab, increase the depth to form the rope. Select three of the bottom center vertices and move them down on the z-axis. Then move the center one slightly further. If needed, you can give the rope a subdivision surface modifier for more geometry. Add a Bezier curve to the side of your frame. With all the vertices selected, press S, Y, 0 to level them out. Ensure the curve is aligned with the center cylinder and the frame. Scale the outer vertex down and move it inwards. Then extrude it down on the Z axis and move it outwards. Finally, extrude it once more along the same axis. Under the Geometry tab, increase the depth slightly. Add a cylinder to the end of the curve, rotate it, and scale it down to an appropriate size of a handle. You can bevel the edges for some added smoothness. Let's now create the bucket for the well. Add a cylinder and slightly scale down the bottom face. Add a loop cut and move it near the top. Select the new faces, press Alt-E and extrude along normals. Select the top face and extrude it down and scale it inwards. Add another cylinder, scale it down and place on one side of the bucket. Again, inset the top face and extrude it down. Then duplicate it and move it over to the other side of the bucket. Add a circle and align it with the two cylinders placed on either side. Delete the bottom half of the circle, then right-click and convert it to a curve. In the Geometry tab, increase the depth slightly to form the handle. You can further adjust the shape of the handle to your liking if needed. When done, join all of your bucket mesh into one object, then move it over to where you created the rope of your well. With all the modeling done, let's move on to the shading. 
For the purpose of this tutorial, we will just be using PBR materials with some simple projection mapping. To start, go into your preferences and ensure you have the node Wrangler Adam enabled. Select your bricks and give them a new material. Select your principal BSDF and press Ctrl Shift T. This will take you to your file explorer where you can locate your downloaded PBR materials. I'll leave a link in the description as to where I get mine from. Simply search for a material of your liking, such as stone bricks, select one that appeals to you, download the zip file and extract it. Once done, press setup and your PBR materials will be automatically set up with one click. Go into front view and in edit mode select all of your bricks. Press U and use cylinder projection. In the UV editor, you can adjust the scale of the textures according to your liking and how you best see fit for your model. For the frames, I'll be using a wood material however, this time I will be using projection from view. Inside view, select all of the faces that align with your viewport. In this instance, it will be these front ones as well as the ones directly behind. Then press U and project from view. Repeat this process for the remaining faces. For the roof tiles, you can utilize cube projection. And again, adjust the scale of the faces accordingly in the UV editor. Continue to do this for all of your remaining objects until you've textured everything. Be sure to subscribe for more content in the future and sign up to my newsletter in the description to receive a weekly tip that could save you hours of headache. I hope you've enjoyed and thanks for watching.